piece of natural lemon quartz. It's actually a trim piece, which means that I used my trim saw and cut this piece off of a larger piece of quartz that I was fasting at that time. That was a huge piece of lemon quartz and it was a few years ago. So when I trimmed all the pieces off of that quartz, I put them back into my stash of rough and pretty much forgot about it until now. A while back, I faceted a piece of lab created green quartz into a gemstone using the Kelpie cut. It was one of the very few times that I've cut lab created quartz. And here's a link to that video if you want to see how I cut this green quartz. I really liked the way the Kelpie cut looked in that lab created quartz. So I decided to cut the Kelpie cut again, this time in a natural quartz and in a lighter color. I think this lemon citrine will be the perfect color to cut into the Kelpie cut. Let's find out. And just as a reminder, this is the way the Kelpie cut should look from the top, the side, and the bottom when I finish cutting it. What makes the Kelpie cut so very interesting is that if you look at the design closely, you can see that the P3 tier or row of instructions calls for you to cut into the girdle on the pavilion side of the gemstone, just a little bit. And it isn't often that you come across a design that cuts into the girdle. So I wanted to see what effect this has on the final stone. I located the instructions for cutting the Kelpie cut uh, from the Victoria Faceters group in Australia and they're a super group of gem cutters. Here are the cutting instructions for the Kelpie cut. Okay, I put the uh, citrine into the uh, spindle of our Ultratech and I used a key dot feature which put the 96 tooth right here. So this piece is, is horizontal to where it should be. So we're sitting pretty good to uh, cut our stone. We'll start uh, preforming it with a 240 grit uh, topper just to get the basic Kelpie shape uh, set in. I'll probably just do the P Pavilion 1 and uh, the Pavilion 2 instructions and the girdle with this with this lap. I may not even do the P2. I may save that for the, uh, the next lap because I'm just preforming at this stage. Okay, I finished going over the pavilion of our Kelpie cut in citrine with uh, 600 grit diamond uh, topper. And uh, I didn't do the final P5 row yet. Uh, I'll save that for the next lap. Make it, it cuts a little fast and I wanted a finer lap to work on that. So I still need to adjust the uh, facets a little bit but this is the general outline of what we're gonna have. And next I'll go with, with the uh, 12M lap, which is about a 1500 grit lap. And we'll see how that looks. Okay, I finished going over our citrine with uh, our, my 12M lap, which is about 1500 grit and the Kelpie, I went, this is the first lap I've used to go through all the tiers, all the rows. The other laps are a little rough and a lot of new cutters go through all the rows, all the tiers with all the laps. And for those rough laps, you're just gonna overcut the uh, facets. So save those till you get to a finer grit. And this Kelpie cut again, what I like about it is it's kind of unique. I don't, I, the P3 and the P5 uh, facets are unusual. It's the first time I've had a facet that intentionally cuts uh, into the girdle with our P3 and so again makes the, this cut unique and that's why I want to cut this cut. It cut a lot of different cuts. You get a lot of experience seeing a lot of different uh, designs. So now I'll go to 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap and go over this uh, yellow citrine again. Okay, I finished cutting and polishing the pavilion or the bottom half of our yellow quartz. And uh, this Kelpie cut's an interesting design. This uh, P3 facet, this one, long one here, goes below, just below the girdle. Kind of interesting because it's not a meet point. Most of the time you'd expect to stop at the girdle. And the uh, P5, which is are these two long ones, there's one on each two of them make up one go 
and they cut just below this step right here and uh, very unique very interesting design I'm interested to see what it looks like so now I'll transfer the stone and uh, cut the upper half so for our yellow citrine I've uh, finished pre polishing the crown of this stone with uh, 3000 grit diamond uh, on a bat lap and I uh, measured it just correctly. I have just enough room for the table. I'll cut off that tiny bit where the top of this triangle is. That'll be the uh, the table. So I'll polish it now. Okay, I finished polishing the upper half of our yellow citrine, and uh, now I'll take the uh, top out of the uh, spindle and set the uh, Ultratech up for the table cut and we'll cut and polish the table and remove the stone from the dock. Okay, I finished polishing the table of the yellow citrine, so now I will uh, put it in acetone and soak out and the uh, two-part epoxy, remove the stone from the dock. We'll be able to weigh it, measure it, and see how this Kelpie cut looks. I liked the way the Kelpie cut looked when I cut it using lab-created gem quartz few months ago. Uh, I like to cut even more now that I see it in a lighter colored uh, natural quartz. This yellow citrine really sparkles with the Kelpie cut. The Kelpie cut's not a difficult design to cut, but a lot of the cuts are cut to eye, meaning cutter decides where to stop. They're not cut to meet points. Also, one row of facets actually cuts into the girdle just a tiny bit, which is unique. My recommendation is to save the P3 and P5 lines of instruction until the end when you're ready to polish everything, um, like I did in the green quartz video. That allows you to line up the step cuts first. Uh, I would recommend everyone give the Kelpie cut a shot as it was fun to cut and it definitely produces a sparkling gemstone. The Kelpie cut design is, to me, a keeper and I hope to find some time down the road to cut it again again. If you do cut the Kelpie cut, drop me a note and let me know how it turned out. Pictures are always welcome. And as always, happy fastening everyone. Mm -hmm.